Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time you are watching this video. You are all welcome. In today's experiment, we are going to determine the refractive index and the angle of minimum deviation of this triangular prism. We will be making use of our meter rule, our optical pin, the a protractor, and then the optical papers. So for us to get started, we will be measuring the angle of incidence, the angle of minimum deviation, our emergent angle as well. So place your hand on the triangular prism and trace out the edges. Make sure that your traces are neat and accurate. Then label it A, B, and C. First of all, we are going to measure the angle of incidence. But for us to do that, we will get the normal. For you to get the normal, make sure that it has to be a bit above the center of the line. So return your protractor on the line and then mark the center point, which is here, my center point. Then my normal should be a bit above the normal, so which is here. Then take your protractor, let the 90 degrees mark be on the point where your normal should be. And then make sure that your line AB is sitting on the 180 degrees mark. And then put a dot at this side and another dot at the 90 degrees mark. Remove your protractor, use the meter rule to join the two points together with a straight line, which I have done. So once it gets to the edge of AB, you use a dotted line to signify that the line is a virtual line. Then remove the meter rule, replace the uh, Call this line N, which is your normal, and the point where both of them meet, O. Then return your protractor at it, and then measure out 30 degrees. For you to measure the 30 degrees, count from the 90 degrees downward. Don't count from this side upward. So this is 10, 20, and 30. Put a dot there. Then remove your protractor, use your meter rule to join the two lines together. Let it meet at O. This is it at O. Then call this line your incident, incident ray. Put a, an arrow inward to signify that it is pointing inward, which means it is the incident ray. And then this angle is your what? Incident angle. Then place two pins on the line and make sure that the two of them should be at least four centimeters apart from each other for at least four centimeters apart from each other. Return your triangular prism on the line. Return your triangular prism and then look through AC. Look through AC. When you look through AC, you use the first point to make sure that it is blocking the other two points, other two pins then look very well, you can adjust your eye to make sure that instead of seeing two pins, that you're seeing one. Now I'm seeing one, I will use this pin to block it. If it is hard, you can use something to tap it and to make sure that your pin is standing erect. Then use the fourth pin to block the other three pins which is what I have done now. So you can remove, at this point, 
You can now remove your pins and your triangular prism and then join the two points together to meet at C, to meet the line AC. So connect your two points together to meet the line at AC. Mine is joined together and then next thing you will do is to measure your emergent angle. For you to measure your emergent angle, you first of all get the normal at AC. The normal at AC, place your protractor on the line AC. Measure that the 180 degrees mark is on the line AC. And then the point where this emergent ray meets with AC is the point where your 90 degrees mark will be. See mine here and then put a dot here and another dot inward. Remove your protractor and then use a straight line to join the two points together. Don't forget to use a dotted line once it is inside the triangle. Then call this line P. Put an arrow here pointing outward to signify it is the emergent ray. Then return your protractor on AC and then have make sure that the 90 degrees mark is on the line P. And then you can now count the emergent angle. Count from 90 degrees to this line, which is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I am having 73 degrees. So our angle of emergence is what? 73 degrees. You know, the angle of emergence is the angle between the normal and the emergent ray. Now, we go to the next point, which is to calculate or to get the angle of refraction. For you to get the angle of refraction, you have to trace this line, put the virtual part of it and trace it upward and then join these two points together. And then trace your angle of incidence inward as well with a dotted line. Now, your angle of refraction is the angle between this normal and your M and your angle of your refracted ray. Your refracted ray is the ray that bends inward as it passes through uh, the two media, which is uh, air and glass. So this is your, M, your angle, your refracted ray. So the angle between the refracted ray and the internal normal is your angle of refraction. So you can place your protractor there to measure. Let your protractor be at the normal. See my here, see the angle, see the normal, and then it's inward on that dotted line inside. So your angle of refraction is the angle between the refracted ray and the normal. So here I have this is uh, 5, 10, 20. So my angle of refraction is what? 20, 20 degrees. And then the angle of minimum deviation is here, the angle between your incident ray and then the emergent ray. Both this should happen inside your inside your triangular prism. So you place your protractor there as well, and then you measure the angle of emergence. See my own the 90 degrees mark is on the incident ray, which is dotted inside, and then 
my emergent angle or my emergent ray, then you have to count from this point, which is the 90 degrees. This is 10, 20, 30, 40, 48 degrees. 48 degrees, which is my angle of minimum deviation. So, for you to write out your angles, so we say that the angle of incidence, which is I, is equals to 30 degrees, and then angle of refraction, according to this one is angle is uh, 20 degrees, which may not be so accurate or appropriate. Then the emergent angle E is equals to 73 degrees, and then the angle of minimum deviation is equals to 48 degrees. So you can now go to your graph using this data and then plot your graph. This is just for the angle of incidence, this is just for 30 degrees. You can go ahead to do for 40, 50, 55, 60, and 65, and then do your calculations, and then you plot your graph. Please, if you're liking this video, you can help me and like it, and then you can as well subscribe if you have not subscribed. And then don't forget to share it with your friends and with your colleagues and classmates. Thank you and God bless you.